Economy of Greece The economy of Greece is the 51st largest in the world with a nominal gross domestic product, GDP, of $200.288 billion per annum. It is also the 56th largest in the world by purchasing power parity, at $297.008 billion per annum. As of 2017, Greece is the 17th largest economy in the 28 member European Union. According to IMF estimates for 2017, Greece is ranked 40th and 49th in the world at $18,637 and $27,796 for nominal GD per capita and purchasing power parity per capita respectively. Greece is a developed country with an economy based on the service, 80%, and industrial sectors, 16% with the agricultural sector contributing an estimated 4% of national economic output in 2017. Important Greek industries include tourism and shipping. With 18 million international tourists in 2013, Greece was the 7th most visited country in the European Union and 16th in the world. The Greek Merchant Navy is the largest in the world, with Greek-owned vessels accounting for 15% of global deadway tonnages of 2013. The increased demand for international maritime transportation between Greece and Asia has resulted in unprecedented investment in the shipping industry. The country is a significant agricultural producer within the EU. Greece has the largest economy in the Balkans and is as an important regional investor. Greece was the largest foreign investor in Albania in 2013, the third in Bulgaria, in the top three in Romania and Serbia, and the most important trading partner on largest foreign investor in the Republic of Macedonia. The Greek telecommunications company OAT has become a strong investor in former Yugoslavia and in other Balkan countries. Greece is classified as an advanced, high-income economy, and was a founding member of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD and of the Organization of the Black Sea Economic Cooperation, BSEC. The country joined what is now the European Union in 1981. In 2001, Greece adopted the euro as its currency, replacing the Greek drachma at an exchange rate of 340.75 drachmae per euro. Greece is a member of the International Monetary Fund and of the World Trade Organization, and ranked 34th on Ernst and Young's Globalization Index 2011. World War II, 1939 1945, devastated the country's economy. But the high levels of economic growth that followed from 1950 to 1980 have been called the Greek economic miracle. From 2000 Greece saw high levels of GDP growth above the eurozone average, peaking at 5.8% in 2003 and 5.7% in 2006. The subsequent Great Recession and Greek government debt crisis, a central focus of the wider European debt crisis, plunged the economy into a sharp downturn with real GDP growth rates of minus 0.3% in 2008, minus 4.3% in 2009, minus 5.5% in 2010, minus 9.1% in 2011, minus 7.3% in 2012 and minus 3.2% in 2013. In 2011, the country's public debt reached 356 billion euros, 172% of nominal GDP. After negotiating the biggest debt restructuring in history with the private sector, Greece reduced its sovereign debt burden to 280 billion euros, 137% of GDP, in the first quarter of 2012. Greece achieved the real GDP growth rate of 0.7% in 2014, after six years of economic decline, but contracted by 0.3% in 2015 and by 0.2% in 2016. The country returned to modest growth of 1.5% in 2017. The evolution of the Greek economy during the 19th century, a period that transformed a large part of the world because of the Industrial Revolution, has been little researched. Recent research from 2006 examines the gradual development of industry and further development of shipping in a predominantly agricultural economy, calculating an average rate of per capita GDP growth between 1833 and 1911 that was only slightly lower than that of the other Western European nations. Industrial activity, including heavy industry like shipbuilding, was evident, mainly in Ermupolis and Piraeus. Nonetheless, Greece faced economic hardships and defaulted on its external loans in 1826, 1843, 1860 and 1893. Other studies support the above view on the general trends in the economy providing comparative measures of standard of living. The per capita income, in purchasing power terms, of Greece was 65% that of France in 1850, 56% in 1890, 62% in 1938, 
75% in 1980, 90% in 2007, 96.4% in 2008 and 97.9% in 2009. The country's post-World War II development has largely been connected with the Greek economic miracle. During that period, Greece saw growth rates second only to those of Japan, while ranking first in Europe in terms of GDP growth. It is indicative that between 1960 and 1973 the Greek economy grew by an average of 7.7%, in contrast to 4.7% for the EU15 and 4.9% for the OECD. Also during that period, exports grew by an average annual rate of 12.6%. Greece enjoys a high standard of living and very high human development index, ranking 31st in the world in 2017. However, the severe recession of recent years has seen GDP per capita fall from 94% of the EU average in 2009 to 67% in 2017. Actual individual consumption, AIC, per capita fell from 104% of the EU average to 77% during the same period. Greece's main industries are tourism, shipping, industrial products, food and tobacco processing, textiles, chemicals, metal products, mining and petroleum. Greece's GDP growth has also, as an average, since the early 1990s been higher than the EU average. However, the Greek economy continues to face significant problems, including high unemployment levels, an inefficient public sector bureaucracy, tax evasion, corruption and low global competitiveness. Greece is ranked 59th in the world on the Corruption Perceptions Index alongside Romania with only Hungary and Bulgaria scoring worse among EU member states. Greece also has the EU's lowest index of economic freedom and second lowest global competitiveness index, ranking 115th and 57th in the world respectively. After 14 consecutive years of economic growth, Greece went into recession in 2008. By the end of 2009, the Greek economy faced the highest budget deficit and government debt-to-GDP ratios in the EU. After several upward revisions, the 2009 budget deficit is now estimated at 15.7% of GDP. This, combined with rapidly rising debt levels, 127.9% of GDP in 2009, led to a precipitous increase in borrowing costs, effectively shutting Greece out of the global financial markets and resulting in a severe economic crisis. Greece was accused of trying to cover up the extent of its massive budget deficit in the wake of the global financial crisis. The allegation was prompted by the massive revision of the 2009 budget deficit forecast by the new Pazak government elected in October 2009, from 6 to 8 percent, estimated by the previous new democracy government, to 12.7 percent, later revised to 15.7 percent. However, the accuracy of the revised figures has also been questioned and in February 2012 the Hellenic Parliament voted in favor of an official investigation following accusations by a former member of the Hellenic Statistical Authority that the deficit had been artificially inflated in order to justify harsher austerity measures. The Greek labor force, which amount around workers, averaged 2,032 hours of work per worker annually in 2011, is ranked fourth among OECD countries, after Mexico, South Korea, and Chile. The Groning and Growth and Development Center has published a poll revealing that between 1995 and 2005, Greece was the country whose workers have the most hours-slash-year work among European nations, Greeks worked an average of 1,900 hours per year, followed by Spaniards, average of 1,800 hours-slash-year. As a result of the ongoing economic crisis, industrial production in the country went down by 8% between March 2010 and March 2011. The volume of building activity saw a reduction of 73% in 2010. Additionally, the turnover in retail sales saw a decline of 9% between February 2010 and February 2011. Between 2008 and 2013 unemployment skyrocketed, from a generational low of 7.2% in the second and third quarters of 2008 to a high of 27.9% in June 2013, leaving over a million jobless. Youth unemployment peaked at 64.9% in May 2013. In 2015, unemployment was rated around 24% and youth unemployment around 47%. By July 2017, however, the rate had improved and was at 21.7%. Greece was accepted into the Economic and Monetary Union of the European Union by the European Council on June 19, 2000, based on a number of criteria inflation rate, budget deficit, public debt 
long-term interest rates, exchange rate, using 1999 as the reference year. After an audit commissioned by the incoming New Democracy government in 2004, Eurostat revealed that the statistics for the budget deficit had been underreported. Most of the differences in the revised budget deficit numbers were due to a temporary change of accounting practices by the new government, i.e., recording expenses when military material was ordered rather than received. However, it was the retroactive application of ASA 95 methodology, applied since 2000, by Eurostat, that finally raised the reference year, 1999, budget deficit to 3.38% of GDP thus exceeding the 3% limit. This led to claims that Greece, similar claims have been made about other European countries like Italy had not actually met all five accession criteria, and the common perception that Greece entered the Eurozone through falsified deficit numbers. In the 2005 OECD report for Greece, it was clearly stated that the impact of new accounting rules on the fiscal figures for the years 1997 to 1999 ranged from 0.7 to 1 percentage point of GDP. This retroactive change of methodology was responsible for the revised deficit exceeding 3% in 1999, the year of, Greece's EMU membership qualification. The above led the Greek Minister of Finance to clarify that the 1999 budget deficit was below the prescribed 3% limit when calculated with the ASA 79 methodology in force at the time of Greece's application, and thus the criteria had been met. The original accounting practice for military expenses was later restored in line with Eurostat recommendations, theoretically lowering even the ASA 95 calculated 1999 Greek budget deficit to below 3%. An official Eurostat calculation is still pending for 1999. An error sometimes made is the confusion of discussion regarding Greece's Eurozone entry with the controversy regarding usage of derivatives deals with U.S. Banks by Greece and other Eurozone countries to artificially reduce their reported budget deficits. A currency swap arranged with Goldman Sachs allowed Greece to hide 2.8 billion euros of debt. However, this affected deficit values after 2001, when Greece had already been admitted into the Eurozone, and is not related to Greece's Eurozone entry. A study of the period 1999 to 2009 by forensic accountants has found that data submitted to Eurostat by Greece, among other countries, had a statistical distribution indicative of manipulation, Greece with a mean value of 17.74, shows the largest deviation from Benford's law among the members of the Eurozone, followed by Belgium with a value of 17.21 and Austria with a value of 15.25. Greece, like other European nations, had faced debt crises in the 19th century, as well as a similar crisis in 1932 during the Great Depression. In general, however, during the 20th century it enjoyed one of the highest GDP growth rates on the planet. Between 1981 and 1993 it steadily rose, surpassing the average of what is today the Eurozone in the mid-1980s, see chart below. For the next 15 years, from 1993 to 2007, i.e., before the financial crisis of 2007 to 2008, Greece's government debt-to-GDP ratio remained roughly unchanged the value was not affected by the 2004 Athens Olympics, averaging 102% of value lower than that for Italy, 107%, and Belgium, 110%, during the same 15-year period, and comparable to that for the US or the OECD average in 2017. During the latter period, the country's annual budget deficit usually exceeded 3% of GDP but its effect on the debt-to-GDP ratio was counterbalanced by high growth rates. The debt-to-GDP values for 2006 and 2007, about 105%, were established after audits resulted in corrections according to Eurostat methodology, of up to 10 percentage points for the particular years, as well as similar corrections for the years 2008 and 2009. These corrections, although altering the debt level by a maximum of about 10%, resulted in a popular notion that Greece was previously hiding its debt. By the end of 2009, as a result of a combination of international and local factors the Greek economy faced its most severe crisis since the restoration of democracy in 1974 as the Greek government revised its deficit from a prediction of 3.7% in early 2009 and 6% in September 2009, to 12.7% of gross domestic product, GDP. In early 2010, it was revealed that through the assistance of Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase and numerous other banks, 
Financial products were developed which enabled the governments of Greece, Italy and many other European countries to hide their borrowing. Dozens of similar agreements were concluded across Europe whereby banks supplied cash in advance in exchange for future payments by the governments involved. In turn, the liabilities of the involved countries were kept off the books. According to Der Spiegel, Credits given to European governments were disguised as swaps and consequently did not get registered as debt because Eurostat at the time ignored statistics involving financial derivatives. A German derivatives dealer had commented to Der Spiegel that the Maastricht rules can be circumvented quite legally through swaps, and in previous years, Italy used a similar trick to mask its true debt with the help of a different U.S. bank. These conditions had enabled Greek as well as many other European governments to spend beyond their means, while meeting the deficit targets of the European Union and the Monetary Union guidelines. In May 2010, the Greek government deficit was again revised and estimated to be 13.6% which was among the highest relative to GDP, with Iceland in first place at 15.7% and the United Kingdom third with 12.6%. Public debt was forecast, according to some estimates to hit 120% of GDP during 2010. As a consequence, there was a crisis in international confidence in Greece's ability to repay its sovereign debt, as reflected by the rise of the country's borrowing rates. Although their slow rise, the 10-year government bond yield only exceeded 7% in April 2010, coinciding with a large number of negative articles, has led to arguments about the role of international news media in the evolution of the crisis. In order to avert a default, as high borrowing rates effectively prohibited access to the markets, in May 2010 the other Eurozone countries, and the IMF, agreed to a rescue package which involved giving Greece an immediate euro in bailout loans, with more funds to follow, totaling euro. In order to secure the funding, Greece was required to adopt harsh austerity measures to bring a deficit under control. Their implementation was to be monitored and evaluated by the European Commission, the European Central Bank and the IMF. The financial crisis, particularly the austerity package put forth by the EU and the IMF- has been met with anger by the Greek public, leading to riots and social unrest, while there have been theories about the effect of international media. Despite, others say because of, the long range of austerity measures, the government deficit has not been reduced accordingly, mainly, according to many economists, because of the subsequent recession. Public sector workers have come out on strike in order to resist job cuts and reductions to salaries as the government promises that a large-scale privatization program will be accelerated. Immigrants are sometimes treated as scapegoats for economic problems by far-right extremists. In 2013, Greece became the first developed market to be reclassified as an emerging market by financial services companies MSCI and S&P Dow Jones Indices. By July 2014 there were still anger and protests about the austerity measures, with a 24-hour strike among government workers timed to coincide with an audit by inspectors from the International Monetary Fund, the European Union and European Central Bank in advance of a decision on a second bailout of 1 billion euros, 1.36 billion dollars, due in late July. Greece exited its six-year recession in the second quarter of 2014. But the challenges of securing political stability and debt sustainability remain. A third bailout was agreed in July, 2015, after a confrontation with the newly elected leftist government of Alexis Tsipras. In June 2017, news reports indicated that the crushing debt burden had not been alleviated and that Greece was at the risk of defaulting on some payments. The International Monetary Fund stated that the country should be able to borrow again in due course. At the time, the Eurozone gave Greece another credit of $9.5 billion, $8.5 billion of loans and brief details of a possible debt relief with the assistance of the IMF. On 13 July, the Greek government sent a letter off intent to the IMF with 21 commitments it promised to meet by June 2018. They included changes in labor laws, a plan to cap public sector work contracts, to transform temporary contracts into permanent agreements and to recalculate pension payments to reduce spending on social security. Greece's bailout successfully ended, as declared, on August 20, 2018. There was a 25% drop in Greece's GDP, connected with the bailout programs. This had a critical effect, the debt-to-GDP ratio, the key factor defining the severity of the crisis would jump from its 2009 level of 127% to about 170%, solely due to the GDP drop, i.e., for the same debt. Such a level is considered unsustainable. In a 2013 report, 
the IMF admitted that it had underestimated the effects of so extensive tax hikes and budget cuts on the country's GDP and issued an informal apology. The following table shows the main economic indicators in 1980 to 2017. Inflation under 2% is in green. In 2010, Greece was the European Union's largest producer of cotton, 183,800 tons, and pistachios, 8,000 tons, and ranked second in the production of rice 229,500 tons, and olives, 147,500 tons, third in the production of figs, 11,000 tons, and almonds, 44,000 tons, tomatoes, 1,400,000 tons, and watermelons 578,400 tons, and fourth in the production of tobacco, 22,000 tons. Agriculture contributes 3.8% of the country's GDP and employs 12.4% of the country's labor force. Greece is a major beneficiary of the common agricultural policy of the European Union. As a result of the country's entry to the European community, much of its agricultural infrastructure has been upgraded and agricultural output increased. Between 2000 and 2007 organic farming in Greece increased by 885%, the highest change percentage in the EU. In 2007, Greece accounted for 19% of the EU's fishing haul in the Mediterranean Sea, ranked third with 85,493 tons, and ranked first in the number of fishing vessels in the Mediterranean between European Union members. Additionally, the country ranked 11th in the EU in total quantity of fish caught, with 87,461 tons. Between 2005 and 2011, Greece has had the highest percentage increase in industrial output compared to 2005 levels out of all European Union members, with an increase of 6%. Eurostat statistics show that the industrial sector was hit by the Greek financial crisis throughout 2009 and 2010 with domestic output decreasing by 5.8% and industrial production in general by 13.4%. Currently, Greece is ranked third in the European Union in the production of marble, over 920,000 tons, after Italy and Spain. Between 1999 and 2008, the volume of retail trade in Greece increased by an average of 4.4% per year, a total increase of 44%, while it decreased by 11.3% in 2009. The only sector that did not see negative growth in 2009 was administration and services, with a marginal growth of 2.0%. In 2009, Greece's labor productivity was 98% that of the EU average, but its productivity per hour worked was 74% that the Eurozone average. The largest industrial employer in the country, in 2007, was the manufacturing industry, 407,000 people, followed by the construction industry. 305,000, and mining, 14,000. Greece has a significant shipbuilding and ship maintenance industry. The six shipyards around the port of Piraeus are among the largest in Europe. In recent years, Greece has become a leader in the construction and maintenance of luxury yachts. Shipping has traditionally been a key sector in the Greek economy since ancient times. In 1813, the Greek merchant navy was made up of 615 ships. Its total tonnage was 153,580 tons and was manned with 37,526 crew members and 5,878 cannons. In 1914, the figures stood at 449,430 tons and 1,322 ships, of which 287 were steamboats. During the 1960s, the size of the Greek fleet nearly doubled primarily through the investment undertaken by the shipping magnates Onassis, Bardenwyanis, Livanos, and Nyarkos. The basis of the modern Greek maritime industry was formed after World War II when Greek shipping businessmen were able to amass surplus ships sold to them by the United States government through the Ship Sales Act of the 1940s. Greece has the largest merchant navy in the world, accounting for more than 15% of the world's total deadweight tonnage, DWT according to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. The Great Merchant Navy's total DWT of nearly 245 million is comparable only to Japan's, which is ranked second with almost 224 million. Additionally, Greece represents 39.52% of all of the European Union's DWT. However, today's fleet roster is smaller than an all-time high of 5,000 ships in the late 1970s. Greece is ranked fourth in the world by number of ships, 3,695, behind China, 5,313, Japan, 
3,991, and Germany, 3,833. A European Community Ship Owners Association's report for 2011-2012 reveals that the Greek flag is the seventh most used internationally for shipping, while it ranks second in the EU. In terms of ship categories, Greek companies have 22.6% of the world's tankers and 16.1% of the world's bulk carriers, in DWT. An additional equivalent of 27.45% of the world's tanker DWT is on order, with another 12.7% of bulk carriers also on order. Shipping accounts for an estimated 6% of Greek GDP, employs about 160,000 people, 4% of the workforce, and represents one third of the country's trade deficit. Earnings from shipping amounted to 14.1 billion euros in 2011. While between 2000 and 2010 Greek shipping contributed a total of 140 billion euros, half of the country's public debt in 2009 and 3.5 times the receipts from the European Union in the period 2000 to 2013. The 2011 ICSA report showed that there are approximately 750 Greek shipping companies in operation. The latest available data from the Union of Greek Ship Owners show that the Greek-owned ocean-going fleet consists of 3,428 ships totaling 245 million deadweight tons in capacity. This equals 15.6% of the carrying capacity of the entire global fleet, including 23.6% of the world tanker fleet and 17.2% of dry bulk. Counting shipping as quasi-exports and in terms of monetary value, Greece ranked fourth globally in 2011 having exported shipping services worth $17,704.132 million, only Denmark. Germany and South Korea ranked higher during that year. Similarly counting shipping services provided to Greece by other countries as quasi-imports and the difference between exports and imports as a trade balance, Greece in 2011 ranked in the latter second behind Germany, having imported shipping services worth 7,076.605 million US dollars and having run a trade surplus of 10,712.342 million US dollars. Between 1949 and the 1980s, Telephone communications in Greece were a state monopoly by the Hellenic Telecommunications Organization, better known by its acronym, OAT. Despite the liberalization of telephone communications in the country in the 1980s, OAT still dominates the Greek market in its field and has emerged as one of the largest telecommunications companies in Southeast Europe. Since 2011, the company's major shareholder is Deutsche Telekom with a 40% stake, while the Greek state continues to own 10% of the company's shares. OAT owns several subsidiaries across the Balkans, including Kismote, Greece's top mobile telecommunications provider, Kismote Romania and Albanian Mobile Communications. Other mobile telecommunications companies active in Greece are Wind Hellas and Vodafone Greece. The total number of active cellular phone accounts in the country in 2009 based on statistics from the country's mobile phone providers was over 20 million, a penetration of 180%. Additionally, there are 5.745 million active landlines in the country. Greece has tended to lag behind its European Union partners in terms of Internet use, with the gap closing rapidly in recent years. The percentage of households with access to the Internet more than doubled between 2006 and 2013, from 23% to 56% respectively, compared with a new average of 49% and 79%. At the same time, there has been a massive increase in the proportion of households with a broadband connection, from 4% in 2006 to 55% in 2013, compared with an EU average of 30% and 76%. However, Greece also has the EU's third highest percentage of people who have never used the Internet, 36% in 2013, down from 65% in 2006, compared with an EU average of 21% and 42%. Tourism in the modern sense has only started to flourish in Greece in the years post-1950, although tourism in ancient times is also documented in Rilatianto religious or sports festivals such as the Olympic Games. Since the 1950s, the tourism sector saw an unprecedented boost as arrivals went from 33,000 in 1950 to 11.4 million in 1994. Greece attracts more than 16 million tourists each year, 
thus contributing 18.2% to the nation's GDP in 2008 according to an OECD report. The same survey showed that the average tourist expenditure while in Greece was $1,073, ranking Greece 10th in the world. The number of jobs directly or indirectly related to the tourism sector were 840,000 in 2008 and represented 19% of the country's total labor force. In 2009, Greece welcomed over 19.3 million tourists, a major increase from the 17.7 million tourists the country welcomed in 2008. Among the member states of the European Union, Greece was the most popular destination for residents of Cyprus and Sweden in 2011. The ministry responsible for tourism is the Ministry of Culture and Tourism, while Greece also owns the Greek National Tourism Organization which aims in promoting tourism in Greece. In recent years a number of well-known tourism-related organizations have placed Greek destinations in the top of their list. In 2009 Lonely Planet ranked Thessaloniki, the country's second-largest city, the world's fifth-best ultimate party town, alongside cities such as Montreal and Dubai, while in 2011 the island of Santorini was voted as the best island in the world by travel plus leisure. The neighboring island of Mykonos was ranked as the fifth-best island in Europe. Thessaloniki was the European youth capital in 2014. Since the fall of communism, Greece has invested heavily in neighboring Balkan countries. Between 1997 and 2009, 12.11% of foreign direct investment capital in the Republic of Macedonia was Greek, ranking fourth. In 2009 alone, Greeks invested 380 million euros in the country, with companies such as Hellenic Petroleum having made important strategic investments. Greece invested 1.38 billion euros in Bulgaria between 2005 and 2007 in many important companies, including Bulgarian Post Bank, United Bulgarian Bank Coca-Cola Bulgaria, are owned by Greek financial groups. In Serbia, 250 Greek companies are active with a total investment of over 2 euro billion. Romanian statistics from 2005 show that Greek investment in the country exceeded 3 billion euros. Greece has been the largest investor in Albania since the fall of communism with 25% of foreign investments in 2016 coming from Greece, in addition business relations between both are extremely strong and continuously rising. Since the start of the debt crisis, Greece's negative balance of trade has decreased significantly from 44.3 billion euros in 2008 to 21.4 billion euros in 2017. In 2017, Imports increased by 13.9% and exports rose by 13.4%. Greece is also the largest import partner of Cyprus, 18.0%, and the largest export partner of Palau, 82.4%. As of 2012, Greece had a total of 82 airports, of which 67 were paved and 6 had runways longer than 3,047 meters. Of these airports, two are classified as international by the Hellenic Civil Aviation Authority, but 15 offer international services. Additionally Greece has nine heliports. Greece does not have a flag carrier, but the country's airline industry is dominated by Aegean Airlines and its subsidiary Olympic Air. Between 1975 and 2009, Olympic Airways, known after 2003 as Olympic Airlines, was the country's state-owned flag carrier but financial problems led to its privatization and relaunch as Olympic Air in 2009. Both Aegean Airlines and Olympic Air have won awards for their services. In 2009 and 2011, Aegean Airlines was awarded the Best Regional Airline in Europe Award by Skytrax, and also has two gold and one silver awards by the ERA, while Olympic Air holds one silver ERA award for Airline of the Year as well as a Condé Nast Traveler 2011 Reader's Choice Awards, Top Domestic Airline Award. The Greek road network is made up of 116,986 kilometers of roads, of which 1,863 kilometers are highways, ranking 24th worldwide, as of 2016. Since the entry of Greece to the European community, now the European Union, a number of important projects, such as the Ignatia Otis and the Atiki Otis have been co-funded by the organization, helping to upgrade the country's road network. In 2007, Greece ranked 8th in the European Union and goods transported be road at almost 500 million tons. Greece's rail network is estimated to be at 2,548 kilometers. Rail transport in Greece is operated by Train OSE, a subsidiary of the Hellenic Railways Organization, OSE. 
Most of the country's network is standard gauge, 1,565 kilometers, while the country also has 983 kilometers of narrow gauge. A total of 764 kilometers of rail are electrified. Greece has rail connections with Bulgaria, the Republic of Macedonia, and Turkey. A total of three suburban railway systems, Proastikos, are in operation, in Athens, Thessaloniki and Petras, while one metro system, the Athens Metro, is operational in Athens with another, the Thessaloniki Metro, under construction. According to Eurostat, Greece's largest port by tons of goods transported in 2010 is the port of Agioi Theodoroi, with 17.38 million tons. The port of Thessaloniki comes second with 15.8 million tons, followed by the port of Piraeus, with 13.2 million tons, and the port of Eleusis, with 12.37 million tons. The total number of goods transported through Greece in 2010 amounted to 124.38 million tons, a considerable drop from the 164.3 million tons transported through the country in 2007. Since then, Piraeus has grown to become the Mediterranean's third largest port thanks to heavy investment by Chinese logistics giant Costco. In 2013, Piraeus was declared the fastest growing port in the world. In 2010 Piraeus handled 513,319 teos, followed by Thessaloniki, which handled 273,282 teos. In the same year, 83.9 million people passed through Greece's ports, 12.7 million through the port of Palukia in Salamis, another 12.7 through the port of Parama, 9.5 million through Piraeus and 2.7 million through Igumenitsa. In 2013, Piraeus handled a record 3.16 million teos, the third largest figure in the Mediterranean, of which 2.52 million were transported through Pier 2, owned by Costco and 644,000 were transported through Pier I, owned by the Greek state. Energy production in Greece is dominated by the Public Power Corporation, known mostly by its acronym Delta Epsilon Eta, or in English Day. In 2009 they supplied for 85.6% of all energy demand in Greece while the number fell to 77.3% in 2010. Almost half, 48%, of day's power output is generatechising lignite, a drop from the 51.6% in 2009. Another 12% comes from hydroelectric power plants and another 20% from natural gas. Between 2009 and 2010, independent companies' energy production increased by 56%. From 2,709 gigawatt hour in 2009 to 4,232 gigawatt hours in 2010. In 2008, renewable energy accounted for 8% of the country's total energy consumption, a rise from the 7.2% it accounted for in 2006, but still below the U average of 10% in 2008. 10% of the country's renewable energy comes from solar power while most comes from biomass and waste recycling. In line with the European Commission's Directive on Renewable Energy, Greece aims to get 18% of its energy from renewable sources by 2020. In 2013 and for several months, Greece produced more than 20% of its electricity from renewable energy sources and hydroelectric power plants. Greece currently does not have any nuclear power plants in operation. However in 2009 the Academy of Athens suggested that research in the possibility of Greek nuclear power plants begin. Greece had 10 million barrels of proven oil reserves as of January 1, 2012. Hellenic Petroleum is the country's largest oil company, followed by Motor Oil Hellas. Greece's oil production stands at 1,751 barrels per day, barrel slash D, ranked 95th worldwide, while it exports 19,960 barrel slash D ranked 53rd, and imports 355,600 barrels D, ranked 25th. In 2011 the Greek government approved the start of oil exploration and drilling in three locations within Greece, with an estimated output of 250 to 300 million barrels over the next 15 to 20 years. The estimated output in euros of the three deposits is 25 billion euros over a 15-year period, of which your 13-14 billion euros will enter state coffers. Greece's dispute with Turkey over the Aegean poses substantial obstacles to oil exploration in the Aegean Sea. In addition to the above, Greece is also to start oil and gas exploration in other locations in the Ionian Sea, as well as the Libyan Sea, within the Greek exclusive economic zone, south of Crete. The Ministry of the Environment, Energy and Climate Change announced that there was interest from various countries, including Norway and the United States, in exploration, 
and the first results regarding the amount of oil and gas in these locations were expected in the summer of 2012. In November 2012, a report published by Deutsche Bank estimated the value of natural gas reserves south of Crete at 427 billion euros. A number of oil and gas pipelines are currently under construction or under planning in the country. Such projects include the Interconnector Turkey Greece Italy, ITGI, and South Stream Gas Pipeline. Euro Asia Interconnector will electrically connect Attica and Crete in Greece with Cyprus and Israel with 2000 MW HVDC undersea power cable. Euro Asia Interconnector is especially important for isolated systems, like Cyprus and Crete. Crete is energetically isolated from mainland Greece and Hellenic Republic covers for Crete electricity costs difference of around 300 million euros per year. Greece has a tier tax system based on progressive taxation. Greek law recognizes six categories of taxable income, immovable property, movable property, investment, income from agriculture, business, employment, and income from professional activities. Greece's personal income tax rate, until recently, ranged from 0% for annual incomes below €12,000 to 45% for annual incomes over €100,000. Under the new 2010 tax reform, tax exemptions have been abolished. Also under the new austerity measures and among other changes, the personal income tax-free ceiling has been reduced to €5,000 per annum while further future changes, for example abolition of this ceiling, are already being planned. Greece's corporate tax dropped from 40% in 2000 to 20% in 2010. For 2011 only, corporate tax will be at 24%. Value-added tax, VAT, has gone up in 2010 compared to 2009, 23% as opposed to 19%. The lowest that possible is 6.5%, previously 4.5%, for newspapers, periodicals and cultural event tickets, while a tax rate of 13%. From 9%, applies to certain service sector professions. Additionally, both employers and employees have to pay social contribution taxes, which apply at a rate of 16% for white collar jobs and 19.5% for blue collar jobs, and are used for social insurance. Now 2017, the VAT tax rate is 24%, with minor exceptions, 13% reduced for some basic foodstuffs, which will be soon abolished and everything as it seems, will soon go to 24% in order to fight the phantom of tax evasion. The Ministry of Finance expected tax revenues for 2012 to be 52.7 billion euros, 23.6 billion euros in direct taxes and 29.1 billion euros in indirect taxes, an increase of 5.8% from 2011. In 2012, the government was expected to have considerably higher tax revenues than in 2011 on a number of sectors, primarily housing an increase of 217.5% from 2011. Greece suffers from very high levels of tax evasion. In the last quarter of 2005, tax evasion reached 49%, while in January 2006 it fell to 41.6%. It is worth noting that the newspaper Ethnos which published these figures went bankrupt. It is no longer published and some sources suggest that the information it had published was highly debatable. A study by researchers from the University of Chicago concluded that tax evasion in 2009 by self-employed professionals alone in Greece, accountants, dentists, lawyers, doctors, personal tutors and independent financial advisors, was 28 billion euros or 31% of the budget deficit that year. Greece's shadow economy was estimated at 24.3% of GDP in 2012, compared with 28.6% for Estonia. 26.5% for Latvia, 21.6% for Italy, 17.1% for Belgium, 14.7% for Sweden, 13.7% for Finland, and 13.5% for Germany, and is certainly related to the fact that the percentage of Greeks that are self-employed is more than double the EU average, 2013A. The Tax Justice Network estimated in 2011 that there were over 20 billion euros in Swiss bank accounts held by Greek stop. The former finance minister of Greece, Avangelos Venizelos, was quoted as saying, around 15,000 individuals and companies owe the taxman 37 billion euros. Additionally, the TJN put the number of Greek-owned offshore companies at over 10,000. In 2012, Swiss estimates suggested that Greeks had some 20 billion euros in Switzerland of which only 1% had been declared as taxable in Greece. Estimates in 2015 were even more dramatic. 
They indicated that the amount due to the government of Greece from Greeks' accounts and Swiss banks totaled around 80 billion euros. A mid-2017 report indicated Greeks have been taxed to the hilt and many believed that the risk of penalties for tax evasion were less serious than the risk of bankruptcy. One method of evasion is the so-called black market, gray economy or shadow economy, work is done for cash payment which is not declared as income, as well, that is not collected and remitted. A January 2017 report by the Dianosis think tank indicated that unpaid taxes in Greece at the time totaled approximately 95 billion euros, up from 76 billion euros in 2015, much of it was expected to be uncollectible. Another early 2017 study estimated that the loss of the government as a result of tax evasion was between 6% and 9% of the country's GDP, or roughly between 11 billion and 16 billion euros per annum. The shortfall in the collection of VAT sales tax, is also significant. In 2014, the government collected 28% less than was owed to it, this shortfall was about double the average for the EU. The uncollected amount that year was about 4.9 billion euros. The Dianosis study estimated that 3.5% of GDP is lost due to VAT fraud, while losses due to smuggling of alcohol, tobacco and petrol amounted to approximately another half a percent of the country's GDP. Following similar actions by the United Kingdom and Germany, the Greek government was in talks with Switzerland in 2011, attempting to force Swiss banks to reveal information on the bank accounts of Greek citizens. The Ministry of Finance stated that Greeks with Swiss bank accounts would either be required to pay a tax or reveal information such as the identity of the bank account holder to the Greek Internal Revenue Services. The Greek and Swiss governments were to reach a deal on the matter by the end of 2011. The solution demanded by Greece still had not been effected as of 2015. That year, estimates indicated that the amount of abated taxes stored in Swiss banks was around 80 billion euros. By then, however, a tax treaty to address this issue was under serious negotiation between the Greek and Swiss governments. An agreement was finally ratified by Switzerland on March 1, 2016, creating a new tax transparency law that would allow for a more effective battle against tax evasion. Starting in 2018, Banks in both Greece and Switzerland will exchange information about the bank accounts of citizens of the other country to minimize the possibility of hiding untaxed income. In 2016 and 2017, the government was encouraging the use of credit cards or debit cards to pay for goods and services in order to reduce cash-only payments. By January 2017, taxpayers were only granted tax allowances or deductions when payments were made electronically with a paper trail of the transactions that the government could easily audit. This was expected to reduce the problem of businesses taking payments but not issuing an invoice, that tactic had been used by various companies to avoid payment of VAT, sales, tax as well as income tax. By July 28, 2017, numerous businesses were required by law to install a point-of-sale device to enable them to accept payment by credit or debit card. Failure to comply with the electronic payment facility can lead to fines of up to 1,500 euros. The requirement applied to around 400,000 firms or individuals in 85 professions. The greater use of cards was one of the factors that had already achieved significant increases in VAT collection in 2016. Greece's most economically important regions are Attica, which contributed 85.579 billion euros to the economy in 2014, and Central Macedonia, which contributed 23.859 billion euros. The smallest regional economies were those of the North Aegean, 2.545 billion euros, and Ionian Islands, 3.137 billion euros. In terms of GDP per capita, Attica, 22,200 euros, far outranks any other Greek region. The poorest regions in 2014 were Eastern Macedonia and Thrace, 11,200 euros, and Epirus, 11,400 euros. At the national level, GDP per capita in 2014 was 16,200 euros. Greece is a welfare state which provides a number of social services such as quasi-universal health care and pensions. In the 2012 budget, expenses for the welfare state, excluding education, stand at an estimated 22.487 billion euros, 6.577 billion euros for pensions and 15.910 billion euros for social security and health care expenses, or 31.9% of the all state expenses. According to the 2016 Forbes Global 2000 Index, Greece's largest publicly traded companies are In 2012, 
the average Greek worker worked for 20-34 hours annually, this figure was the third highest among the OECD countries. Between 1832 and 2002 the currency of Greece was the drachma. After signing the Maastricht Treaty, Greece applied to join the Eurozone. The two main convergence criteria were a maximum budget deficit of 3% of GDP and a declining public debt if it stood above 60% of GDP. Greece met the criteria as shown in its 1999 annual public account. On January 1, 2001, Greece joined the Eurozone, with the adoption of the euro at the fixed exchange rate 340.75 to 1 euro. However, in 2001 the euro only existed electronically. So the physical exchange from drachma to euro only took place on 1 January 2002. This was followed by a 10-year period for eligible exchange of drachma to euro, which ended on March 1, 2012. Prior to the adoption of the euro, 64% of Greek citizens viewed the new currency positively, but in February 2005 this figure fell to 26% and by June 2005 it fell further to 20%. Since 2010 the figure has risen again and a survey in September 2011 showed that 63% of Greek citizens viewed of the euro positively. IMF's forecast said that Greece's unemployment rate would hit the highest 14.8% in 2012 and decrease to 14.1% in 2014. But in fact, the Greek economy suffered a prolonged high unemployment. The unemployment figure was between 9% and 11% in 2009, and it soared to 28% in 2013. In 2018, Greece's jobless rate was around 20.1%. It is thought that Greece's potential output has been eroded by these prolonged massive unemployment due to the associated hysteresis effects. Greece has suffered from recession, massive public debt, and poverty has increased. Those living in extreme poverty rose to 15% in 2015, up from 8.9% in 2011, and a huge increase from 2009 when it was not more than 2.2%. Those people at risk for poverty or social exclusion was 1 in 3 or 35.7%. The rate among children 0 to 17 is 17.6% and for young people 18 to 29 the rate is 24.4%. With unemployment on the rise, those without jobs are at the highest risk at 70 to 75%, up from less than 50% in 2011. With jobs harder and harder to come by, a quarter of the population is out of work and for people under 25 the rate is 50%. In some harder-hit areas of Western Greece, the younger generation unemployment rate is more than 60%. When people are out of work for more than two years, they lose their health insurance, further increasing the problems of those in poverty. When younger people are out of work, they rely on the older generations of their families to provide for them to get them through the hard times. However, Long-term unemployment across the country causes pension funds to decrease because they are getting less money from the working population, so those older generations are getting less money to provide for the younger generations and their entire families, putting more of them in poverty. Many aspects of the economic problems add to the problem. The Greek people have continued job loss and wage cuts, as well as deep cuts in workers' compensation and social welfare benefits. For those who are working, their wages have dropped. From 2008 to 2013, Greeks have become 40% poorer on average, and in 2014 saw their disposable household income drop below 2003 levels. The Economic Survey of Greece 2016 shows optimism and a stronger recovery in 2017 by using things like the reforms in place and outside investment in jobs to help change the course of the high levels of poverty. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.